In this video, we're going to learn how to make a stock watch list in Excel. Watch list is a very useful tool to track the stocks of your interest for potential trading and financing. Okay, let's write the name of the company of our interest. Let it be Microsoft. It's a ticker symbol. And to get the data, uh, we need to click data and stocks. On the right hand side, we need to select the market, which will be NASDAQ stock market. Yes, and now it should work. Company name. Okay, when we click on the name of the company, on the right side, there will be a small icon. We click on it and let's select first the ticker symbol. And now let's select the data that we're interested in. For instance, price, which is the current stock price. Percent change of the price. Then we might be interested in the volume of stocks that is traded right now. It could be also good to know the volume average. And for instance, what could be also useful is uh, market capitalization. Okay, and now let's add more companies on our list. For instance, Amazon. Okay, it didn't recognize it directly, so we click on the name and then click stocks again. Here it is. Apple. Google. Tesla. If we are not sure about the ticker symbol of the company that is of our interest, we can go to Yahoo Finance and write the name of the company that we are curious about. For instance, Oatly. And here will be the ticker symbol Oatly. Okay, let's return. Oatly. And let's add other companies. For instance, this is Argo blockchain company. And for instance, we are interested in the company that is not traded in New York Stock Exchange. So what should we do? There is a small trick here. We can go to the uh, website of Microsoft and here they have the information about um, stock markets and it includes also market identifier code which we'll be using and here are all different stock markets um i would be interested in the finnish a stock market which has the market identification code as x hell so what we do is we write x hell double point and for instance fortum and enter and here it is. So now we select the top row and propagate the values. And here it is. Now let's calculate the relative volume of the stock. Which would be calculated as volume divided by the average volume. Yes. Wonderful. What is needed here is a little bit of more colors that will help us to fastly get the information from our table. So let's use conditional formatting. Let's highlight the column that we would be interested in. Go to conditional formatting and less than. 
we would be interested to know um, which values are below zero, for instance. And here I select red text. Okay. And let's highlight all values that are above zero with green color. So greater than zeros. And then we cannot find anything with a green color here. So we go to custom format. First, we go to fill, background color, no color, pattern color, white, and font, let it be this green. Okay, and okay. Now let's do another conditional formatting using bars. Let's use the column relative volume. And just calculate it again. It will give us the same volume. And here we will use conditional formatting, but using data bars. Let's use this green color. Wonderful. However, it doesn't look so nice with these numbers um, in the background. So what we do is we do right-click, Format Cells. Under the Number tab, we put Custom. And in the Type, we write three semicolons and press OK. Now it looks much better. So what else we can do here is that we can add a little bit of bars, bar charts, to illustrate the situation in the market. Let's do it with the price of the stock. And let's say with the market capitalization. In order to make it look a little bit nicer, we select both of the graphs, shape format, and let's align them on the top. Wonderful. OK, now we learned how to get the immediate prices and the data, the current data of the stocks. Um, just before we continue with the next um, step, step, let's go to data and let's try to refresh our data. Yeah, that works. And everything is refreshed. Also the bar chart refreshes. Perfect. So now let's learn how to get historical data for the stocks. First, we start with the company name. Let it be Apple. And then we need to have the start and the end date. Let the start be 1st of December 2021. And the end date, 1st of December 2022. Good. And then we will use the function, which is called stock history. We need the company name, start date, end date. Now we need to select which kind of data we need, uh, daily, weekly, or monthly. Now I would want to have daily data. And then we need to choose if we want to have headers or no headers in our table. I highly recommend you to have headers in the table so that you remember which variables you selected. So one. And then let's select what specific data we want. It can be date, so zero, and let's, let's select close price, one, and enter. And here it is. Let's check if everything is fine. Yes. Okay, 
Now let's do the same thing for the company that is not traded in New York Stock Exchange. For instance, let's add Fortum. So we're using the same trick as before. We write the market identifier code, which is xhelp, double point, Fortum. And then our function, stock history. Again, company name, start date, end date. Daily data with headers, date, and the close price. Wonderful. Let's have a look again if everything is fine. OK, so what we can see is that Fortum data has one more row compared to Apple data. That could be explained by the fact that, for instance, on 24th of November 2022, New York Stock Exchange was closed. Uh, this is probably because at that day, it was a Thanksgiving Day in the US and the market was closed because of the celebration. So in this case, I would recommend you uh, to merge the dates. Or if, for instance, you are dealing with the companies that are traded in different stock exchanges. Or, for instance, just compare the companies of the traded in the same uh, stock exchange market. All right. Here it is. Now we know how to do a simple watch list in Excel, how to get current data for the stocks, how to get historical data. And you see, with a little bit of effort, it's a very useful and powerful tool that will save you time and hopefully will be helpful in the future. Thank you.